start sir okay so will there be other members joining over here okay so i'll start uh good afternoon everybody uh, so this is the live session for analog communication course so which is running uh, in the nptel so you might be already doing it for five weeks so what i'll do i'll quickly go through the questions that you have posted uh, so if i can see uh, there are few uh, questions which are related to administrative uh, part so I'll, I'll talk about that later but there was one particular question that was uh, related to uh, the subject matter so that was actually somebody has asked why we need transform so this was the question that uh, okay so let's try to understand uh, why really we need transform so that's the first question that uh, somebody has asked so let us try to see in uh, communication at least why do you need transform in all other cases of course transform is required but let's try to see uh, or understand why really this uh, fourier series or fourier transform that we have talked about in the first two weeks probably or even more than that so why we do require this particular things for understanding communication or devising communication mechanism so what generally transform does so transform takes us from one domain to another domain this is something we have already talked uh, about in the uh, course itself uh, in the lectures so it, it generally our understanding is if a signal that is generally represented in time domain that means we, we just try to see if it is a voltage signal so what we do uh, over time how the voltage varies that's what we call a signal right so this is the signal and this is the time domain representation of a signal so signal can vary in any way in time domain so that's exactly uh, what we see in time domain representation of a particular signal and transformed into a electrical equivalent electrical signal so whichever way you do it okay so a transducer will be there and then you actually transform the signal which are carrying information like now i am talking so i am about any signal he was actually uh, thinking about some periodic kind of signal uh, by the way, you should understand that any periodic signal that is not carrying any information because periodic signal means you know what will be happening in the next period. So once you have observed a particular period, you will be knowing that that will be repeated. So basically once it will be, you know that it will be repeated. Therefore, means at the recipient or at the receiver end, you don't have any information over there. So that's not an information carrying signal but though it is not an information carrying signal but it is a time varying some kind of voltage or current whichever way you represent so it's it's a signal so what Fourier started doing is he started observing the signal and try to see can we characterize this signal a little farther or characterizing the signal means can i subdivide it into known components this particular signal like we do for vectors so that's what i was teaching in the class also so any vector can be subdivided into multiple vectors of known direction so vector can have any direction but it can be subdivided into multiple vectors of known direction and then just the amplitude in that particular known direction you specify and then you say these vectors if i add probably or subtract i get this resultant vector so this is how any vector can be represented through some known vectors similarly in signal domain Fourier started doing that that is why that vector analogy i actually teach okay so in Fourier means in Fourier series also what Fourier started doing that signals any periodic signal can we represent them with some known periodic signal that was his quest initially so the quest actually ended up in showing the Fourier series he could say that any periodic signal that can be represented through some basic sinusoidal and cosinusoidal signal and including the DC of course so that is also uh, means uh, a particular uh, means you can you can uh, talk that as a limiting sinusoidal kind of thing so if you take all this sinusoidal okay infinite number of with uh, the frequency omega zero which is which is the uh, means frequency omega zero and it's uh, multiple so if you take those frequency and this omega zero is actually the signal has a period so that periodicity 
So if you take that and take all sinusoidal cosinusoidal, you can actually represent this particular signal, any signal. So be it any periodic signal, you can represent them with respect to these cosinusoidal component or sinusoidal component. And then he actually uh, went from trigonometric representation to exponential representation. And from that, we started getting the Fourier spectrum, Fourier series spectrum. So basically what was happening, then we could, we could actually plot a kind of frequency domain where all the frequencies are plotted. So frequencies are telling which particular frequency is there. And then you have a corresponding equivalent to spectrum. One is amplitude spectrum, one is equivalent phase spectrum. So in the amplitude spectrum, it just says that a particular frequency component, how much amplitude is required to construct the signal. And like this, all frequency component, omega zero, two omega zero, three omega zero, and of course, the DC value zero and minus omega zero, minus two omega zero, all those things. So that entire part, if you get, then basically, if you plot this, this amplitude spectrum and phase spectrum, that's also an equivalent representation of the signal. That's what Fourier has proven. So therefore, I have a periodic signal. It might be a square pulse, okay, periodic square pulse. That can be equivalently represented by corresponding frequency domain spectrums, two spectrum, amplitude and phase spectrum, okay. So this was the earlier representation. And from there, we could see that probably the other representation is just talking about in the x-axis, it's, it's the frequency it is talking about. Which frequency components, how much it is there. How much amplitude and how much phase. That constitute the signal itself. Okay, so this was what we were seeing in actually Fourier series representation. And from Fourier series, once we started doing that, okay, maybe we will not now talk about a periodic signal. So if we restrict ourselves from representing a periodic signal to a periodic signal that we did from series to transform. So if you do that, so basically what you do, any signal, any time domain signal can be represented. It, it might not be periodic. So you think about the period goes to infinity. Once you do that, all the frequency component goes closer by and then you get a continuous spectrum actually. So it's an equivalent spectrum density probably that's what you get in the transform domain or Fourier transform domain. So this is what we expect. Once we get this, basically the advantage is we now get two representation of the same signal. One is one is the time domain representation. Sir, your video is frozen, sir. Sir, please rejoin.